Hi, my name's Katie G and I'm from London. Five years ago, I went to volunteer in Africa, in Zanzibar, which is an island off of Tanzania. And it was the month before I was meant to start university. And so it was kind of like a substitute gap year, going away, doing something different for a month. And on the last weekend on the island, we were, I was in a completely random acid attack. Two guys from my right hand side drove through it and then drove straight off and then from there I ran straight to a bathroom, tried to wash as much as possible and then within 24 hours I was on a medivac home back to London to Chelsea and Westminster Hospital where I was treated for burns. When we arrived at Chelsea and Westminster I had no idea that the story was picked up at all because I was asleep basically the whole journey back. I was completely sedated on the airplane. And so when we arrived, I was like very shocked to see, I had friends calling me saying, you're on the news. I had no idea it was happening. But to me at that point, it was completely irrelevant to me because the next day, essentially I had 12 hour surgeries to get rid of all the burns as much as possible. So that was like the last thing I was thinking of in that moment. I was having blood transfusions, skin grafts, therapy, everything you can probably think of, um, I was having it. And then came back home and from there it was five days a week in hospital having physio, seeing my occupational therapist having a face mask fitted, pressure suits fitted, spent two months in a scar rehab centre in the south of France and it was kind of just an ongoing recovery. Went to Nottingham University the following September but worked from home for the first year and a half. My last year was able to attend university normally but was still having surgery maybe about 12 times a year at this point and now five years later and I still had surgery four weeks ago so it's just ongoing but getting there slowly. When you're in hospital for um, something that's like so serious it's strung upon you, you just are so vulnerable that anyone in a position of power, like the doctors, the surgeons, you just listen to them. So for me, hospital is completely distracted by everything going on. And then when you get back home and all your friends are at university and getting on with their own lives and you're still in hospital every day, then that's kind of when everything hits you and it starts setting into how bad the situation is. So for me, that's kind of when it hit me and when I really had to like focus on myself and my mental health and that kind of recovery just as well as the physical recovery. I think the biggest mental health challenge is just like being scared of life, being scared of hurt, being hurt again and with that comes like different forms of anxiety or forms of PTSD and I think that's probably the hardest part um, in terms of like a mental recovery and an emotional recovery as well. I was offered initially, as you can imagine, like these news channels just like jump on stories like this. And um, I said no to absolutely everything to begin with. It wasn't my interest, I wanted to focus on myself. And then maybe about two months ago, I made my story a little bit more public. I just started posting about myself and I set up my YouTube channel and just things like that. And last weekend I wrote an article for um, a national newspaper and it was all about my recovery and what I aim to do in terms of social media. And without my knowledge, I didn't have the last read through, um, they changed the title of the article to Girl Horribly Disfigured within the whole title. And then from then, I was thinking of what I could do about this just because A, it upset me and B, for everyone else reading it, they probably would either get offended or think it was just so normal and so normalised that this was being written about someone with a disfigurement and then therefore take on that opinion as well. So I decided to put that on my Instagram and then made the hashtag setting the standard where everyone had to post a picture of themselves with any insecurity or anything that they wouldn't normally post onto Instagram and from then it kind of took off. So on Instagram especially, which is kind of why I based it on Instagram, we're so obsessed with everything being perfect, everything's curated. Whenever we scroll down, everyone looks like faultless 
And I just think, A, that's really damaging because 99% of people don't fit into what is considered perfection in terms of how the media perceives perfection. That's exactly why I started it. It's just so important that everyone comes to realize that that's not real life and everyone's aware of it, but everyone still gives into this, which is just making everyone's anxiety and insecurities worse. I think it's really important to remember that beauty will always be a part of society and it's also important in other ways to embrace beauty and everyone's individuality and beauty in that in that sense but true beauty comes from like within is your character your confidence happiness and I think it's really important to remember that so there's a great quote from the Talmud which is so you don't stare at the container but rather at its content and I think that's really important to remember I'm Katie G and you're watching JTV. To stay up to date with the latest JTV content, if you're on YouTube, click subscribe below the video and the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, click the like button and under following, click see first.